ChatGPT is an amazing tool that can be used to brainstorm ideas, write elaborate emails in a language you don't even know, or figure out what to cook with only a few things left in your fridge. In November 2023, during the first OpenAI Developer Conference, the CEO of OpenAI announced the possibility of creating customized versions of ChatGPT, which are called GPTs, or how most people call it, custom GPTs. Let's start this course by demystifying the idea behind the GPT. When you create a GPT, you can create a customized version of ChatGPT with specific instructions, additional knowledge in the form of documents or external data sources, and the ability to take an action, like sending an email. For example, you can create a custom GPT to help you plan your meals and another custom GPT for analyzing some financial document. Two different use cases, two different GPTs. What is absolutely amazing is that you can program a custom GPT by talking to it, just as you have conversations with chat GPT. You don't need to be a software developer to create GPTs. Actually, for most things, it is quite easy. This is essentially a no-code approach accessible to anyone. So in this course, we will learn what custom GPTs are, what it takes to build one from scratch, and how to share it with others. So let's not waste any time and create one. To create a custom GPT, you need an account with OpenAI. I am here at chat.openai.com, and this is essentially the chat GPT interface, and this is where the magic happens. Now, in order to actually access this feature of creating custom GPTs, you need to have a GPT Plus subscription. Or if you're getting GPT through your organization, you need to have GPT Business. So you can easily check if you have a Plus account by going to your account name and going here to Plan. You will see here, I'm on the plus plan. And if you are on the free plan, you need to upgrade to the plus plan to be able to create or use custom GPTs. So this is the first requirement. Now, in order to create the GPT from your account, you need to go here to explore. So here from explore, what you should see here right on top is my GPTs and the ability to create a GPT. If you're having any issues following up so far, check the troubleshooting document after this lecture, which includes additional details in order to access this feature. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a GPT. This is the interface that is being used to create a GPT. So you'll see here, we have a new GPT, it's currently draft, and we have here essentially a split screen. On the left-hand side, meaning this part, this is where we configure the GPT. This is where we provide essentially the conversation to actually build it. So we'll see here, we're having a conversation with the GPT builder. On the right-hand side, this is where we have the preview. You're gonna see how our GPT looks like. So we're gonna have a conversation with this GPT builder to actually create this GPT. You will see here, like right from the beginning, it's gonna say, hey, I'll help you build a new GPT. And essentially the question that is, is like, what would you like to make? So for example, I wanna create a GPT that helps me generate meal ideas for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I eat meat, but I prefer meals to be rich in veggies and nutrients. I also eat eggs and cheese, but I am intolerant to milk. So this is the initial information that I'm providing. And if you want to use the exact same prompt as I am, I'm going to include this as a resource to this lecture as well. Let's go ahead and send this message and see what is happening next. So essentially, now the GPT builder will start configuring the GPT. See here is updating the GPT. This will always take a few seconds. Next, we're going to see here that the GPT behavior has been updated. And it's going to suggest a name for our GPT. If we want, we could go with this name or suggest a different one. Of course, every time we're going to try this out, maybe you will get a different name. So I'm going to say, yes, this is fine. 
and this is the name of the GPT. This is how we're gonna identify it. Apart from this, the GPT builder will also generate a profile picture based on the information we have provided so far. So I'm gonna see here, this is the image that is being suggested. And it's asking us if we want to make any changes. I'm gonna say that it looks good. So I want you to notice the conversational nature of this. This is essentially like talking with ChatGPT, but configuring the custom GPT. Now, I want you to notice what is happening here on the right hand side. First of all, we're going to have here the image that identifies this GPT. There's also here like a description of the GPT. And apart from this, right here below, what we're going to see here are four suggestions. These are essentially conversation starters. These are some prompts that we can immediately use. So, this is how our GPT looks right now. It is particularly designed for planning some meals. So let's see, for example, if I want to get some breakfast ideas, I can simply click on this. Now I'm interacting with the GPT and the GPT is considering every information that I've specified so far. Okay, so now let's just assume that we're kind of happy with this GPT, how it looks like, and we want to save it for later on because right now our work is not saved. You will see here it's still a draft, still called new GPT. So for that reason, I'm going to go here on the right hand side and we're going to use here publish to only me. It's going to tell us here that the name of the GPT is currently empty. So it seems that currently this name hasn't been updated. So we can still continue the conversation here with something like what is the name of the GPT. So we're going to get here that the name is culinary creator gonna say here okay save the name so it's currently now updating the GPT and that name should also be saved I'm gonna see here right on top the name now appeared why this hasn't happened the first time I'm a bit confused but this is how it is sometimes we need to provide some information multiple times so now this name has been saved so we can now go to the save button I'm going to select here publish only me and select confirm. And now what's super important is here on the left hand side panel. So this is the panel on the left hand side. You can also close it and open it again. You're going to see here ChatGPT. This is how you typically interact with ChatGPT. But here underneath, you're going to find here the culinary creator. So this is the custom GPT that you have created. For example, now you want to plan your breakfast. You can simply click on this instead of going to ChatGPT and providing all this information. You can simply go here to the creator and use again one of these ideas, let's say now for lunch. So essentially, this is how you're going to interact with your GPT directly from this interface, and you'll be able to easily access it as you would access ChatGPT. So hope that this quick introduction to building your first custom GPT has been useful. And in upcoming lectures, we're going to get much deeper into all the technology behind this and create even more complex examples.